with a new bill coming through the Senate. It's going to uh, come come to the House that will crack down on Chinese cheating in trade, namely currency manipulation. Will you today on the Laura Ingram show say that you support that bill? Well, I, I haven't read it, Laura, but I, but I will tell you, based in concept and what you have told me, I support that concept. Well, that actually made a lot of news on Friday. Michelle Bachman saying essentially she would support this bill that is at its critical juncture in the U.S. Senate. It is about time that the United States stood up to China on the way it is cheating day in and day out on the issue of trade. Now, I think more than any other show on radio, I have focused on China. People think I'm China obsessed. People think I, well, it's our fault, not China's fault. You can't blame China. Well, and my my answer is no, you actually can't blame China for protecting Chinese companies, right? Because that's what China's in the business of doing. They're, you know, they they have state run capitalism and that's what they've decided to do. And look, they have massive economic growth to show for it. But I think it's time to review our own policies toward China when China routinely subverts the rules of international trade and continues to undermine uh, the concept of free trade vis-a-vis the United States and other countries. Joining us now, a man who's a leader on this issue in the U.S. Senate, my friend, Senator Jeff Sessions, the great state of Alabama, who, of course, is the ranking member on the Budget Committee. And, Senator, I am thrilled to talk to you, not only because this issue is near and dear to my heart, but because finally we're seeing movement on an issue that so many Americans have been uh, you know, asking for for a long time. I think you're right, Laura. This, this is overdue. It is the most massive currency of manipulation in the world. There, uh, the, the impact on the world economy and America particularly uh, is so dramatic that it's just got to be confronted. And I, I can't understand the willingness of um, um, too many American leaders to just go along with that, not, well, uh, not buy and, and And the Washington Post uh, today, I'm sure you woke up and read the editorial in the Washington no, Post I about haven't. this. I'm sure it just, hey, this is the first thing you do, Jeff Sessions, when you get up, you go, what is the Washington Post saying today? Because you need to take your marching orders from, from those bright lights. But they uh, basically say, this is bad, it's going to do more harm than good. Uh, the trade imbalance can't be um, rectified in this way. Uh, you know, uh, other low-wage countries that do do not artificially depress their currencies could easily take China's place. What's your response to that? Well, why not? Uh, why should other low-wage uh, countries, uh, like our neighbor Mexico, um, why should why would we? be concerned if we buy more products from uh, the Philippines or Mexico or uh, places like that rather than China. I mean, uh, do we have some sort of, do we owe China something? Uh, They're the second largest economy in the world. I think it's time for China to grow up and participate positively in the world economic order, but they are economically nationalist. Now, they manipulate their economy to further geopolitical goals, and it's not a perfectly free market world like some of our free market friends tend to think. Uh, they are definitely manipulating this for, for political uh, um, power and influence. Well, what, what exactly does this do uh, to uh, put teeth in this, in this idea, though? Because I, from what I gather, it's, it's quite a modest uh, bill. I mean, this is not exactly a, a, a an anvil coming down on China. Uh, so tell us exactly what will you're happen. Exa- you're exactly <laughs> right. It's not an anvil, uh, but it does. It, but but it does require allow a private business who's clearly uh, can show that they've been uh, damaged by a dumping or caused by currency manip- manipulation to require. Uh, in the Commerce Department to investigate it. And Commerce must investigate it when a probable cause showing has been made. And then if they find that the uh, trade is being uh, damaged, uh, free trade is, by the currency, they, they must take action which would normally include uh, countervailing anti-dumping type duties uh, that would level the playing field. And That so could far... have a real impact. Well, I, I, I hope so, because... Take some time. 
It won't happen overnight. It'll have to be proven. Uh, but mm-hmm. uh, I think that this can be proven, and I think we are suffering the loss of American jobs right now as a result of this currency problem. And we don't need to lose a single American job as a result of unfair trade, uh, uh, as a result of unnecessary regulation, as a result of not producing American energy. Uh, we need to uh, do the things that create jobs that don't just spend more money and make our country deeper in debt. Well, the president has asked repeatedly for bipartisan action on a number of things, Senator. And I think we've finally given him some bipartisanship on this. You're working with Chuck Schumer. You, I, I had to rub my eyes when I first saw the, bo- the two of you on the screen last week. I think, OK, what are these two up to? But I have to say both of you I agree with. I think so. Um, I believe it is a bipartisan thing. I think it's a bit odd that the president's been demanding that we take up his jobs bill and pass it now, and that he apparently hasn't called Senator Reid, who's going to bring up the China currency bill today and not his jobs bill. Well, when I see the Republican presidential candidates, like, I guess Rick Perry is is not in favor of uh, this bill. I think, uh, what is... What's happened to the Republican Party when major figures in the Republican Party don't see the wisdom of holding China to account for these things? I, I, I don't I don't get it for the life of me. And I'd, I'd like your reaction to Perry on this. I'm not familiar with his position, but I do believe the Republican leader. Well, that's his position. The Club for Growth was on our show on Friday and Rick Perry, apparently right now, the Rick Perry is against this bill. Well, I think he makes a mistake uh, in that. I think other candidates are in favor of this. I think Donald Trump really created a, a lot of interest when he made his position clear that we've got to stop this currency manipulation. So I, I, I do believe that we need to push aside uh, this international corporate world advice. They have their own interest. They're not coterminous with the just interest of the United States, in my opinion, Laura. And so we've got to ask ourselves, what is in the interest of the United States, the working American citizens? Are we losing jobs as a result of this unfairly? And if we are, uh, we need to say it's got to end and end it now. And that's what I've concluded. You can tell that you're a lawyer, by the way, Senator. I don't think we've heard the word coterminous used on our show before. I love that. <laughs> And, well, it's just uh, I, I've come to be firmly of the belief that these corporations, when they come running into Washington often to lobby, it's because they've got a big plan in China or somewhere, yeah. uh, and they're getting pressured by the, the communists, and they want us to uh, protect them or, 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 or defend their interest, and it's just not right. We need well, to be and, uh, protecting uh, American interest. Yeah, and the, and the Coca-Cola chief was saying last week how much easier it is to do business in china which i guess is probably true now i mean it's easier for them to set up a you know big factory there than all these lawyers breathing down their necks and all these environmental regs you know and so they're like, oh well it's easier here to do business here and i don't i don't blame the i, don't, I actually don't blame the corporations and, i don't and either really i blame the government policy that for decades has looked the other way as all these libertarians at places like the Club for Growth, God bless them, I like what they do on a lot of issues, but we have been sold a bill of goods on this China question. I've been talking about this since the first day almost that I got in the into the media. And as the, whether it's they're stealing our technology or whether the campaign contributions during the uh, Clinton years or this issue of trade. And the trade deficit has ballooned to $278 billion from about $18 billion, what was it, 15 years ago or, say, or so. And, and as a result, American workers don't have jobs. I mean, we get a lot of cheap junk at Target that I guess the First Lady bought last week, but we don't, we, a lot of our jobs are gone, and, and that has an effect. I think the, the, the geopolitical leaders in China um, are probably laughing at us, as our libertarian friends think, ask the United States to operate if we're on a perfectly pure free market world in trade, in which it's not. It's being driven driven by geopolitical uh, forces, don't you think? No, I mean, it's being it's being driven by China that that viciously yeah. 
protects Chinese interests, and they're doing it because they can. I mean, why do you climb Everest? Because you can. Why do you manipulate your currency? Because until this moment, uh, when we see, we see this movement in the U.S. Senate, the United States has basically done nothing except a few letters to what? The WTO over the years. I mean, that's basically all we've done. When we were promised, Senator, that when China joined the WTO, when we allowed them to join, that China would turn a new leaf and it was going to be a new page and they were going to stop all this uh, nonsense and all this, this chicanery. And in fact, none of that happened. It got worse. So and in, in the, in the whole thing got more closed, not more open when it came to, you know, the transparency and the lack thereof that they apply to their own internal workings in, in the corporate world. So we want to we want to uh, well, before we leave this topic, I just hope, Senator, that this is the beginning of a real change within the Republican Party and in, in its stance on China, because if it is, that's going to be transformational for the party and for the good. Otherwise, the Democrats are going to step into that void. Well, I, that's good advice. I think your analysis is sound, and I know Richard Burr and, and Lindsey Graham, and I certainly agree with that, and I think many other Republicans do.